So I've been having some problems with uh, there. So I'm gonna try to scope out this area where the, I think I can see the bear. One of the biggest problems with the bears here is you just can't see them coming. Last night I was coming up from the boats on the four-wheeler and it was dark out. The bear was down there on the road. It looked like for a second he was gonna try to attack me and I didn't have a gun. See his teeth and his claws. And luckily he decided to turn around and take off. I think he's getting a little too comfortable around here. I don't have a problem with most of the bears, it's just one. You know, he's starting to get into stuff and being aggressive. There's that bear track. Can't really see it very well, it's in the moss. See, it looks like he's been down here today. Check the beach and stuff, and uh, I walk up the trail. See, it looks like he's been around. There are a lot of bear trails around my property, so you need half a mile perimeter around yourself, you know, like a bear safety net. Bear, of course. Ain't nothing moving around. Is that? There's no beaches now. Usually they come walking down the beach, but now because the water's so high, they've been using the road. So now it's a little harder to tell when they're coming. Tracker. Bear was coming down to the beach just as I got there. Tracker chased him back up. Oh, I probably should have left you at the house. But he took off. I don't have the right gun for this. It's hard to, it's hard to sight in on the bear with a scope and he's close. Yeah. It was definitely a little bit of a scuffle before he took off. You hear the bear growling. Tracker. He must have got a bear paw to the face or something. Tracker's never gotten wounded by a bear before. Pretty nerve-wracking to know that the, you know, the bear's kind of fighting the dog now instead of just running away. Good dog, good dog. If the bear killed Tracker, I would be heartbroken. He is my best friend. I think I'm going back to the house and tie the dog up. Be my other guy. It's a sneaky bear. Every time we set foot in the woods, every time we come out of our house, there could be a danger. All year long, this is just the way we live. Looks like a good line right here. How deep do you think it's going to be? I don't know. I haven't set net in this spot. We're usually up here on the bar, but it's a lot thicker than I expected. Right now, the whitefish should have eggs, huh? Yeah, yep. So if we do get lucky, they'll be all over the ice holes. Yeah. This is our last opportunity to gather up some fresh fish for the winter. And it's nice and warm this time of the year. It's good to go out and get stuff done like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Next ones, we're gonna use chainsaw. <laughs> to some people, 10, 15 below zero might sound like it's cold. But, you know, up here in this country, we get used to 60, 70 below for a month, two months at a time. Woo! Too darn cold out there to be setting the net and checking it all the time. With this size of a net and trying to catch tosses, uh, pretty much the only thing we're going to catch. Whitefish. Whitefish, yeah, sorry. Large whitefish. Large whitefish. It's the one that got the big humpback on it. Humpback whitefish, maybe. <laughs> All I know is we call it tosses, uh, and it tastes good. <laughs> That's all I know. Louise and I are going to bring our rope through using this bent stick. You got your hook ready? Uh-huh. OK, I'm seeing it. Bring it to the right. OK. And then we'll go to the next hole. Get a bent stick, feed the line through. That's what my auntie showed me. Easy, easy. Mm. OK. Oof. This time of the year, these fish, they're coming into these big eddies underneath the ice, and they're spawning their eggs. Almost there. <laughs> yeah. Might have a week or two to catch these fish before they head out, and then we're just left with smaller grayling and a lot of pike. OK. Now we attach the net to this end. Louise pulls on that end, and the net goes under. You all set? Yep. All right, I'm dropping the anchor in. We're almost there. A little more. OK. All right, well, we did it. Looks good. Let that do its thing. And get some peeling back in the fingers. Gosh. Exciting. Can't wait to check it. Yeah. Anything for me to grab? Yourself. <laughs> okay. As you get older, it changes you mentally, physically. It changes your perspective. Spot right here. We are here. You gonna sit here? Yeah, I'm gonna sit here with Deb. Okay. <laughs> Me and Bob, uh, but we can go a little bit down the coast. Okay. More chances uh, catching seal, but we might got his first uh, bearded seal here. This is called Umashak. This is a good spot for hunting seals, especially with northwest wind. Do you guys have these in Shishmaraf? <laughs> No. <laughs> They're all tiny islands. These are sail blinds. Uh, we call them Ninky and Yupik. We better set up uh, before they start coming. OK, let's hunt. OK, put you down. Huh? We have these all over the island, Ninkies. Ninky or Minky? Ninky. <laughs> My name is Deborah. Gertrude, Nellu is my fiance. Are you excited? Yeah. So I'm pretty excited to be taking you out with my family. I'm really thankful for Nellu and her family and to get to see more of their homelands and get to know more of their culture. I grew up in Shishmara for most of my life. I'm in Yupik and they're Siberian Yupik, so it's really cool to be able to learn all these new things because it's all brand new to me. Come on, see you. You walk up, no. When my dad was growing up, there used to be hunters at every single blind, and they used to talk, and they would communicate with their hand signals. But today, not many people go out, not as much as you wish they would. 
I'm really grateful to be one of those people go out and provide and keep our culture alive. Ha! Tweety bird! I could only think of it as some kind of a message from animals come up to us. Uh -huh. What if they were trying to tell us something? Seal's coming. Wow. You missed. I just saw it go down. You saw the hair low. My eyeballs almost popped out of my eyes. <laughs> Chase missed a good sized spotted seal. It was uh, actually very close. Finger happy? Finger happiness? <laughs> he just missed it. He's probably going to remember it for a long time to come, if not forever. Ooh, your heart. <laughs> going to be in your head forever and ever and ever. Can't be only one. There's gotta be more somewhere. Probably gonna come up on null if it's going that way. Choppy. Choppy waters. Keep your eyes out. Hey, don't drop them. <laughs> Going out hunting every day, you have to be very brave and know what to do out there. The more people that, you know, you bring out, more chances of uh, catching any kind of game. Papa. Hi. Hi. I haven't seen any. They miss a big seal. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, close. It was coming this way, all right? You guys see the splash? Uh-uh. I never even hear a gunshot. Huh. Came up real close. It would, too. Real close? How close? 50 feet off the shore. Oh, child. I thought it was going to come this way because it was swimming. I know. I was waiting. Deborah's too distracted by the beautiful views. I know I keep looking everywhere. This <laughs> lake is just as big as our town. I didn't know it looked like this. I want to go sit with Bowie for a little bit again, huh? And I hope you see one. Yeah. It's a good sight to see seals. Hopefully there'll be more. We're not out there hunting for sport or whatever, for amblers. You're killing whatever you need for you to survive. Come here. Look at you. Yeah, bear got you good. Poor guy. Could have been the end of tracker. I think a bear's got to go. He's getting to the point now where he's getting dangerous. He's getting a little more bold and threatening my property. I think I'll go look for that bear, figure out where he's, figure out where he's hanging out. And I'm like, yeah, I have to kill, you know, animals so I don't have to. That tracker's like my best friend out here. He protects me. So now I guess it's time to protect him. This is like the bare road to move up and down this river. They're just down here all day fishing. In the spring, they come you know, out of the mountains. They're coming you know, hundreds of miles sometimes. But it looks like all the fish are gone now, so that's kind of a good sign. So hopefully the bears will start heading back into the hills, but I think Tracker smells them. Smells something. Something's back here. The trails usually make sense. You know, the bears have a little bit of a thought process, so they're traveling and everything. Yeah, so this is where he's been laying. He tore all the tundra up. He spent all night down there eating. It looks like he's been like sleeping right here in the daytime. It only took me a couple of minutes uh, to get back from the house. So you know he's like super close. I'm gonna go down to the bay and uh, check on the boats and everything, make sure he didn't start getting into stuff down there. The 
bear's starting to get into stuff. That's not good. It's just gonna get worse. Yeah, so you got in here and chewed up my tiller arm. He's been eating fish on the beach. Oh, yeah, so there's like dead fish. That's fresh. That looks like it was from last night. It's super fresh. Not good. I think my best bet is if I had to catch him coming out and beat. I'm gonna try to go give him a good scare. Try to chase him off for good. You learn as you're going and get older. You make your own shortcut. You'll always make it back home. Are you ready, Glenn? Oh, yeah. Glenn and I are off to pull our crab pot from Volga Bay, where he has one and I have one, and that increases our chances of getting crab. When we pull the crab pot, it's a long way, about 35, 40 minutes skip ride. Out here in the open water, the weather is not always in our favor because of the swell that washes right up. The crab pots that we're gonna pull are in a bay, and it's a lot calmer and a lot easier to get. We gotta get everything before the winter hits, otherwise it's pretty hard to get up there. You get some wicked winds with tide flowing in and out. Driving around out here is like studying for a test. You gotta memorize where all the rocks are, any reefs, it's... Is my buoy. Your orange buoy should be really easy to see. It should be right here. You should see the buoy no matter how many white caps there are. It's a big orange buoy. It's just like my Uncle Marvin's gear he has on. <sighs> Mine should be real close around here. Just that small cork, and it's very hard to see. If we find Glenn's, I got a good bearing of where my crab pot is. I don't see mine anywhere. Is that the cork right there, Glenn? Is that a cork? I think that's your cork. <laughs> Why we use two pots? Yeah. By not finding Glenn's crab pot decreases the chance by half because not all the pulls we do are success for king crab. I got that pipe out already. Okay. I got you. Our chances now are cut in half by one pot missing, and hope we get something in this. There we go. Coming up, Glenn. You can stop it. Well, how do we do? Oh, look at that. Scored heavy. If we scored, we are not going home empty handed. There you go. A lot of females. So I think we got a couple of keepers, but there's so much females. I'm very happy to see that. Flip it over? Yeah. I was so happy to see females because I know that at least there's some there to still reproduce, and that's a very good sign. This is a female, Glenn. You see how the female brown belly, big belly? Oh, is that the eggs right there? You see them in there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of eggs, females. They gotta be producing. It's the future. If there's anything that we want, is crab for the future. Here's a male we'll keep. How big it is? Keeper here? Yeah. 
you got your tree, Ben, I'll take tree, okay? All right. Lost my pot, but I'm bringing food home. Good job, Glenn. Well worth the trip, even with half the crab pot. Found one crab pot. What's missing is my big orange buoy. My daughter taught me to enjoy life more, to be with family members, and enjoy time with each other. Too. It's kind of tricky for me in these kinds of waters. A little bit choppy. Yeah. Is that a bird or a seal? No, look, when she was younger, she didn't like to go hunting at all. Her passion for hunting has changed. It's a joy to see that she wants to go out hunting with us all the time now. It's like having a little kid all over again. To see that happening in your own eyes is very beautiful. I can't tell if I can see it. Over there. It's like 2 or 3 o'clock, I don't know, somewhere in there. Hey, that was easy. That's definitely a seal. Where is it? I don't know. It's still leaving. They're looking at it somewhere. You see it? I don't look there. The seal is moving. You gotta be very focused. I lost it. Man, probably not gonna see it again. Keep an eye out. What you got in the bank account doesn't really matter. In our tradition, a man that got a big, full wood yard, he's rich. A man that got a hundred dens in his head, he's rich. He's gonna be able to make it. He's gonna do good in life. I'm ready. You're gonna break through the slush ice. Ooh. Oh! Thank goodness. Aw. Uneventful. <laughs> Made a trail for you, though. <laughs> I thought it was going to shoot right across that ice. I thought it was going to make it straight out to the fishnet. I thought you were going to go into that slush ice. <laughs> Lots of snow. A lot more water today. Best part about setting the net is, you know, just the suspense of sitting at home and waiting that first 24 hours, sitting there wondering if you set it right. You know, wondering if you got any fish. Want me untie the other side? Oh, it looks like that choppy. Well, we don't have a big window of trying to catch white fish with eggs. It was a bit late by the time the river grows over enough this year. It changes every year. We know we don't have much tide. Slippery. Oh. I'm just hoping if we got some fish in there. I'm already imagining different ways I'm going to cook them. Oh. All right. Oh. Yeah. Oh wow, nice hey. level. Hey. I see it tosses up. Wow. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You rascal. I can't throw it. <laughs> Coming at you. Put it right back into the net. Woo! Woo. Good shot. Hey, hey, bigger one. Yep, yep one another right one. There. This is our big portion of our diet through the winter. Wow. I see, it. see the eggs coming out right hey. here? Hey, yeah, there is still eggs. Cool. Store bought fish 
Doesn't have much taste, much fat, or anything like that, compared to what we get out of our river. Whoa, look at this belly. Oh, what's that? Uh, for now, we got a good, strong, healthy whitefish population. And my kids, grandkids, great grandkids, they're all going to be able to fish for the same fish. Wow. How many was that? I didn't even count. Oh, I can't count that high. <laughs> and I really enjoy ice fishing. That's something I've done since I was able to walk. <laughs> Getting out with Stephen is a lot of fun, you know? It's some. Um, Alone time, you know, we have a house full of kids and everything. Not heavier. <laughs> my little adventure of my life here, you know, it's been 50 years. I just want to ship the flow. Just step right there. And you break it in half. Parents used to work on a crab processor back in the 70s and 80s when all that stuff was abundant. People would go over there in the middle of winter and go and work on processing king crab. But those days are over. There's no more abundance of king crab. It was overfished, very overfished. Back in the 70s, this used to be very fruitful. When I was growing up, they used to pull crab pots full of king crab, and it was commercially fished out. Now, us, as the people that live on the coast that relied on it, we got to document three king crab per family to the state of Alaska. Now I cut up Glen's three. There's that camp. Should be between this camp, this one, and that one. So it should be right out here. Big old orange buoy should be right smack in the middle. So I have no crab pot. You can't just go to your local store and buy one. There ain't no local store here. And then because of the size of them, they got to come down on a plane, and it's just money. It's just, it's not a kind of money that you just have. We live here, we use this to survive for our family and outsiders, other fishing boats, hunting boats that come back in here. They take the crab. I know I'm not native, but my kids are. These are foods that their ancestors were able to get. All of it's being fished out. We're not the ones fishing it out. But now we're the one paying the penalty. We're the ones who have to follow certain rules and guidelines just to feed our family. Whoa, sus. Stumbling to getting slippery. Too much crab juice. Three, three, so two families at least six good months of winter. And if you got a family, regardless how big your family is or how small your family is, three king crab is not really uh, adequate. Look at that. Oh. Oh, hot. Very hot. <laughs> mm. Mm. Fresh. Very tasty. Sorry, Buck, you get the crab that you catch. I definitely respect the bears out here. You know, we're all like sharing the same land. And you gotta have some respect for an animal that can, you know, rip your face off. It's uh, pretty quiet out here. It's past the time that the bear showed up yesterday. The longer the bear stays around, the worse it's gonna get. It's like quickly escalating. I love Tracker at the house. I didn't want him scaring the bear away. Right, it's picking up again. So that's uh, 
That's really great. I really enjoy standing in the rain. I go walk around a little bit. Death stroll through the woods. Oh yeah, look. It's a lot of Tracks. Yes, yeah, so we actually came from this way. It was a full ball of that. Have it. There's a big one. My sights have been marred. I shot at as it was in front of her. I don't see tracks or anything. No blood, no body, no bear. I'd rather shoot and miss than hit and wound him. Hmm. It's the sneakiest getaway I've ever heard. We are a very ingenuitive, imaginative family. That's a very important technique to have in a place like this. So winter's upon us and it's getting cold. Kids are anxious to pull what they planted. Hey, yeah. Look pretty cool. This is my first year growing things. You know, times of change, kind of got to change with the times. It's a learning experience for all of us. Grab it at the base, right here, and then pluck it off. After we get done harvesting whatever's in there, I'm gonna dismantle it and put it away because we cannot leave the cover up over winter. So I know it'll be still in good shape for putting back up next spring. That's my solid. We want to keep our freezers stocked, just make living here as good as it can be. Wow, you got scored heavy. Yeah. You got a salad. <laughs> <laughs> Fired up again yeah. next spring. We are 60 people in a little village. Out here, we adapt and overcome because we do a lot of subsisting out here. That adds up. All right, we're going to go pick up some kelp from the beach, OK? Let's take. Oh, big old handfuls. What are we doing with the kelp? Mommy and Daddy said that this is going to be our compost for next year's gardening. My hope is that we can be self-sustainable. Can you lift it? Yeah. We become our own farm. Sprinkle some in here. Go down that row, sprinkle some. On the top? Yep. Over the winter, it'll break down. And it puts all the nutrients into the soil. That's the foundation of a greenhouse, and we start from there, and we'll just wait to see what comes of it. You know, the kids will be a big part of the garden next year. All right, empty it all out. Are we good? Yep. All right. It's about the future for me. Again next year. Uh, 
hunting brings something else. It's the kind of happiness I love to sink in while I'm home. The sun is setting. We haven't been seeing any seals. You got it. Oh yeah, there's blood. Hunting. When our toes are frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited to have people that teach me because I never got to learn all these things and uh, these guys are so willing to teach and I just love embracing learning all these new things with Nello and her family. My first ring seal. <laughs> <laughs> my first seal from my ninki. first seal from my ninki ever. <laughs> Pretty cool. Now we can go home. <laughs> it was nice to be going out with Chase and uh, Nalu and uh, Deborah. It's been a real good time spending with my daughter. Hey, hey, we're going home with the seal. Catching our first seal from a seal blind. I enjoyed that time out here, and uh, it was a very beautiful day. where the bear was when I shot at him. I thought he ran straight back. I couldn't find any tracks or anything last night. So I'll go, I'll go look around a little bit. I don't mind missing as long as I didn't worry him. Where's he at? Definitely not a sport hunter. I don't necessarily like killing animals. Especially after being in combat. You shoot so much in the Marines. That's a big part of your life for so long that when you start doing it, that muscle reflex like kick, kicks in and definitely messes with your mind a little bit. See anything? 
nothing. The dog's not giving off any indication that there's a bear around. He would definitely smell it if it was close. I think that bear got off scot-free last night. Maybe I scared him off for good. So that was definitely a, not an ideal situation, but ended the best way it could. I got rid of the bear. I didn't have to kill it. They're not really out to hurt you. They're just living their lives, and I'm living my life, and we're just living our lives together. Cream of the crop right here. Got a couple of these tosses on. I'm going to take them and fillet them here. Batter them and deep fry some tosses on tonight. I like those on fish. Good healthy food. You know, it's a different day and age. Kids, they got a different tongue nowadays. A lot of kids, they don't appreciate these types of foods that I bring to our table. Little ones, curious and what's going on. Our ancestors, our elders, and people before us grew up eating this stuff. Cook this batch, and then we'll eat some more. Look at your dad. Wow. That looks awesome. Mm -hmm. Not too damn shabby. If I don't say so myself, Louise enjoys letting me cook. I think I might be the better cook. <laughs> no, yeah. stuff. I don't like it. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> it does bring a lot of joy to me to be able to see my children enjoying our native foods or Janaga foods. It's really good. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad you like it. It's pretty amazing. I enjoy it. Ready? Gonna uh, cut the skin out. Wow. Look at that good meat. We take pretty much everything. We could use the blubber and make seal oil. We eat the guts, the kidneys, the heart. Everything's good. We don't waste it. One day I will butcher my own seals. <laughs> I'm still learning. I think that's what the culture survival is. Passing knowledge down to the new generation. Yeah, good tosses are. Know that you're doing my best to preserve our way of life. Now, we've been living and surviving for thousands of years. I feel like being a Lutik is crucial. Traditions and cultural things are being lost. It's important for us to retain as much as we can and pass down what it is that we can. I feel like it is part of my job to pass these stories on. You know, it's our way of life. It energizes me. It gives me that, that feel. It's part of my tradition. We don't want to end up being a story about who we are and what we did. We want to keep it alive. Pass it down generation after generation.